Today's topic is on assets. Now, what are assets? Assets are things that you own. So therefore, um, they must bring you some kind of benefit or positive value. Um, so therefore, it also requires careful and appropriate measurement. Asset represents the wealth of individual or organization and it is also used as a parameter of performance. Asset evaluation also forms the basis of many business decisions and it depends on the long-term performance of that company. Now, what are the types of assets? In oil and gas industry, assets can be in the form of land or aggregate. They can be the equipment that the company owns, the infrastructure such as the, the facilities, the, the pipelines, the uh, production sites, those are all their assets. Projects that the company owns are also assets. And also companies or subsidiaries uh, that the company owns is also considered as asset. Asset can also be in the form of financial investments such as shares, bonds, stocks, and etc. And they can also be the intangible items such as IP, patent, trademarks, and etc. And not forgetting human resources, the workers are also the company's assets, whether they are skilled, licensed, or experts. Now, assets are evaluated most of the time is to make appropriate decision. Decisions such as to purchase or hire up an equipment or the company decides to develop an oil or gas field or it can be that they need to purchase or disposal of a, an existing production facility or um, maybe they need to decide on an acquisition of a production license or uh, even uh, for any kinds of negotiation to uh, borrow towards an investment. And also, um, in the case of taking over of another company, then you will need to evaluate that company's asset. Now, asset evaluation also uh, is important and it needs to be reported to the shareholders as well as for uh, tax assessment purposes. So when this is done, they must be uh, uh, done using a set of legally defined rules and procedures. There are three conceptual methods of evaluation. First of all is uh, what we call a book value method. Book value method is derived from the premise that the value is based on cost. In other words, current value relates directly to the financial history of the asset. Market value considers the value in the context of a current transaction, which would inevitably be constrained by market forces. So the asset is converted to currency. Cash flow considers the future of the asset in terms of revenue and cost. The asset is used to generate currency. Now, the book value method is also known as the historical cost method or the accountant's method. So, the method is based on the premise that the value of a single asset after a time period of n equals to the original cost of the asset A0 and minus all of its depreciation of all the years. So for a company, if it has several assets, then the profit of the company or a loss at a specific time would equal to the change in the aggregate value of all of its assets over the stipulated period. Okay. So what is this depreciation that I'm talking about? 
Depreciation is sometimes known as depletion or amortization. Depletion is used when we're talking about tangible items while amortization is for the intangible items. Depreciation is the accountant's method of writing down the value of the asset over time. So the process actually attempts to match our perception that the value of an asset really diminish over time. So it is the reduction in the book value of an asset over a period of time. It is also the reduction in the economic usefulness of the asset, uh, which is you're calculating the wear and tear of the asset. Amortization, as I mentioned, is used for intangible items such as patents, intellectual property, trademarks, and copyright. So depreciation is really an attempt to match the expenses with the revenues. And accountants do this because they try to spread the cost of an asset over the service life of the asset. The present value of an asset, after deducting the depreciation amount, is recorded in accounting books. To do this, you will need to know what is the economic life of the asset and what is the expected value of that asset after you use it or until the business is over. Now, there are various methods of calculating to help the management reach an objective. The three commonly used depreciation schemes are the straight line depreciation method, which is the easiest and simplest method, the declining balance method, which is a form of a um, accelerated depreciation, and the third scheme is called the unit of production or unit of activity. Now first, let's um, take a look at what straight line method is. Now, straight line method is the simplest form of depreciation. In, in straight line method, the asset value is assumed to diminish linearly over the planned life of the asset, uh, which then uh, gives you a value of zero at the end of the asset's life. So this scheme will reduce the value after the anticipated life of the asset. But anomalies can also arise if the asset life deviates from N, and if, if N, uh, the life is greater than N, then the asset will continue in use with zero book value, but if life is less than N, the asset will have a positive book value on termination. Now, assuming that the salvage value is zero at year N, hence the book value or the year end value which we we name it as a uh, subscript n here the book value at year uh, n is equal to the original cost multiplied by 1 minus n which is the year that you want to calculate divide by the life of the asset the capital n so if you want to know what is the value of an asset at a certain year, you just you use this formula. For you to know what is the annual depreciation, you just simply you can simply just uh, minus or find the difference between the book value for two years. Since um, but since uh, the depreciation is uh, equal amount every year so therefore you can just say that depreciation is actually just the original cost divide by the life of the asset and you get how much is this its yearly depreciation let's take a look at this example let's say that you have an asset that costs $500 
So we write, if you write it down in a table like this, at year zero, the written down value of that asset is 500. Using the formula to find what is the value of the asset at year one, for example, you put it in the formula and you get, you will get that at year one, or at the end of year one, the beginning of year two, the value of asset is $450, meaning the amount of depreciation for that year is 50. Using the same formula for the subsequent years, you will get all of this book value for that asset. And finding the difference would give you an equal amount of depreciation every year until the end of the asset's life, which is 10 years. At year 10, your written down value would finally go to a zero. All right. So as you can see just now, I mentioned that for straight line method, the depreciation amount is the same every year. It's 50 bucks in this case. So what you can do to find what is the annual depreciation, you just simply uh, divide the cost with the life of the asset. So 500 divided by 10 will give you 50. And when you plot the graph for a straight line method, you will see that the graph is a linear graph that goes to zero. Since, for example, from that previous example, it started off with 500. And finally, at the end of year 10, the value of the asset is zero. The other method is called the declining balance method. Declining balance method is an accelerated form of depreciation. In the declining balance method, the written down value of the asset would decline at a rate, so not at a linear rate. Um, but uh, it, it has a rate which is constant proportion of that written down value. And uh, with this form of proportional depreciation, the written down value changes rapidly at first, but then it increasingly slow, uh, begins to slow down, but uh, at the end, it will never reach zero. And the fact that more value is lost in early years than in later years matches one's perception of how an asset value behaves. The formula is a bit more complicated as shown here, uh, to find the written down value or the year end value of an asset at year end is equal to multiplying the original cost um, with 1 minus P over N. So this P here is a, um, a constant where you change whether uh, P, uh, whether it is uh, 1 or 2 and so on, depending on what is the rate. If, uh, if you if you're doing a single decline balance, then P is equal to 1. If you're doing a double decline balance, then P equals to 2. And then um, you divide the P with the life of the asset. And you power it all with the year in which you want to calculate the uh, asset value. Now, um, that P over N, that ratio P over N can also be in a form of um, uh, percentage. Let's say if if you're doing a 25% decline in balance, that then the P over N is um, 0 0.25. In this case, the depreciation is a bit more tricky, and it requires you to write it down properly in uh, in a table form. And the formula to find the annual depreciation is P over N times the depreciation of a year before that, a n minus 1. 
if we compare the graph for the double decline invariance with the straight line method, if you remember the straight line method will produce a graph that will uh, that is linear, while the double decline balance will have this kind of graph where it uh, the, the the rate that it drops is a, is a bit rapid in the beginning, and then it starts to slow down. Now, the third method is unit production method. In unit production method, the written down value of the asset declines in proportion to the depletion of a reserve of a finite resource. For example, if you're, if you're talking in terms of reserves. So the unit production method is uh, basically uh, it changes uh, according to how much uh, some, uh, an asset is being used, for example. Like when a reservoir is fully depleted, the written down value is reduced to zero and any variation in the esti estimation of reserves will cause variation in the rate of depreciation. And as a general rule, such changes can only affect future written down value. The formula for the unit production method is AN, which is what is the year end value for a or whatever year that you want to you find out. Is equal to the original cost times 1 minus P divided by R. So P here is the cumulative production that year has produced divided by the total res recoverable reserve. And to calculate the annual depreciation, it is P over R times the original cost. Now let's look at an example. Let's say that... Um, you purchase a coal mine. So this company, XES Corporation, they purchase a coal mine at $16 million. And it was estimated that this mine has the capacity to produce about 200 tons of coal. And this company has successfully extracted 46,000 tons during its first year of operation. So please calculate the depreciation. Remember um, the formula that we use to calculate the depreciation under this method. So to do this, oops. Um, so therefore, this, the depreciation is uh, what how much the company has produced. P is 46,000 divided by the total reserve, recoverable reserve. In this case, um, the mine can uh, produce 200,000 tons of coal times the original cost of that mine, 16 million, and you get $3.68 million per year. So that's the depreciation. Let's look at another example. Let's say that a plan costs $110 million and you purchase this plan in April 1st, 2020. The salvage value was estimated to be $10 million and the plan as is expected to produce 150 million units. Uh, by the end of December 31st, 2020, the plan uh, was able to produce 15 million units. So calculate the depreciation of the plan for the year ended December 13, 2021. So the depreciation is whatever number of units that uh, they have produced, which is in this case 15 million units divided by the total recoverable units or the number of units that it can produce. So in this case, it is 150 million units. And then times the original cost, uh, which is 110 million. And in this case, there is a salvage value of 10 million. So therefore, cost minus salvage value. And you get the answer, 
10 million dollars. All right now, so we've seen the diff three different kinds of depreciation schemes. If we compare the three different, uh, if we plot all of their graphs, we see this. The straight line is the graph of the book value for a single line depreciation scheme. And you can see that the declining balance, the declining balance uh, book value, which is these ones here, you can see that at the beginning, the depreciation rate is really high, but as um, the years go by, you see that the rates become slower and at the end of the life of the asset, the book value doesn't go to zero for the climbing balance. For unit of production, it will vary depending on the production rate. So sometimes, um, if we look at a, a reservoir, for example, normally during the first few years of production, um, the production is a bit low. It, it will be because it's, it's starting up. But as the years go by, then the production starts to ramp up. So when the production ramps up, that's when the depreciation is also a, a, a bit becomes higher because it, fo it follows how much product the, the production is. And towards the end of the production line, the uh, and we know reservoirs, they start to deplete and therefore the production starts to drop. And with this, when this happens, depreciation also drops. And at eventually becomes zero at the end of the asset life. We will now try and do a tutorial on depreciation.